First of all, I'd like to thank organizers uh, to giving me the chance to be here. Um, uh, I'm not an uh, atomic physicist. I'm working on quantum optics, so totally different subject today. Uh, my uh, subject is hybrid quantum information processing. And uh, today, uh, or, no, no, no. Uh, 20 years ago, I was a member of this uh, quick project. Uh, Jeff Kimball is here. And uh, uh, there are some key persons uh, here for this talk. Uh, these are my collaborators. Uh, this is my uh, team at University of Tokyo, and these are senior collaborators. Um, there are two types of uh, encoding of quantum information. One is, of course, qubit, and another one is continuous variable. Uh, in optics, uh, Qubit is a photon, usually photon, and uh, in some sense, it is a particle and uh, time domain delta function. On the other hand, uh, in continuous variable, we usually use wave picture, and that is, in some sense, a frequency domain delta function. But in our case, uh, it is pretty much hybrid. And that means uh, we have some time duration, and also we have sign, uh, frequency bandwidth. Uh, that means wave packet. We are using wave packet for quantum information processing. And uh, the time duration and bandwidth are coming this way. Uh, at the moment, we are using uh, 100 nanosecond uh, time duration and 10 megahertz. And uh, coming to 10 nanosecond and 100 megahertz, and uh, our goal is one gigahertz, uh, one nanosecond and one gigahertz. Uh, that is because <clears throat> uh, it determines uh, clock frequency of our quantum computer. And uh, as you know, uh, clock frequency of ordinary computer is on this order. Um, this is our hybrid approach of quantum information encoding. Um, uh, this is the simplest encoding, uh, qubit encoding in quadrature amplitude, or uh, qubit encoding in uh, amplitude and phase of time, uh, time evolution of a wave function. So actually, this is just a vacuum, so there is no time uh, dependence, and also this is just single photon. But if you make a superposition of zero and one, uh, vacuum and single photon, uh, you will have some wavy structure. And uh, we encode quantum information in this amplitude and phase. Of course, this is coherent state. Uh, the reason why we use uh, this uh, encoding is that uh, with qubit, uh, we can make high fidelity operations and efficient quantum error correction, of course. And, oops, it doesn't work for some reason. Um, uh, with continuous variable, uh, we can make efficient quantum operation with many photons. Uh, that means much levels or qubit. In that case, uh, we can uh, use uh, one-way packet as one logical qubit for quantum error correction, like this. For example, these superpositions or some time beams. And uh, uh, in that direction, we already succeeded in a deterministic teleportation of uh, time beam Q trips. Uh, this is our time being q trip and uh, actually, uh, I mean, uh, superposition of 0, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 0. And uh, actually, this is a sort of qubit, qubit encoding. And uh, we teleported uh, this 
uh, cute trick. And we got uh, this uh, state as a teleportation output. Uh, the fidelity is rather high. And uh, the reason why we tried uh, this experiment was that uh, by using this technology, we can uh, make a bosonic code. Uh, that is uh, error correction code against loss error. So superposition of 0, 4, and 4, 0, and 2, 2. Uh, continuous variable methodology is very powerful. Uh, we can uh, create very gigantic cluster state. First of all, we packet of squeeze vacua, vacua combined and uh, getting EPR beam and then recombine. Uh, here is delay. And we can create uh, uh, ultra large scale cluster state like this. And we <clears throat> make measurement here. By using this type of uh, cluster state, uh, we can make a quantum operation like this. And if these uh, measurements are uh, just homodyne measurement, I mean just changing the measurement uh, phases, uh, even that uh, measurement, uh, we can make universal Gaussian operation. And also, only one nonlinear measurement uh, for here or for here, uh, we can make it universal. And our cluster state is like this. That is superposition of these operators. Uh, these A correspond to this line or this beam, and uh, B uh, this B correspond to this line or this beam. And uh, uh, this kappa, uh, K or K plus one correspond to this uh, time index. And as you know, uh, EPR state is a, uh, simultaneous eigenstate of these two operators. Uh, similarly, our uh, cluster state uh, simultaneous eigenstate of these two operators. So uh, this one, uh, xka is here, and uh, xk plus one a is here, like this. And um, uh, the eigenstate for this state is zero. That means these uh, actually, th these are stabilizers uh, or nullifiers should be zero. Uh, but of course, uh, our squeezing level is not uh, infinity, so we have some value. But still, we have good uh, non classical coordination like this. Uh, this, this is ex experimental result, measurement for uh, XA, and uh, this is XB and PA and PB. And uh, we ca uh, calculate this one and this one. Uh, you can see uh, almost perfect correlation between them. And also, uh, these uh, operators uh, becomes, uh, have a pretty good correlation. Uh, and uh, that means if you make subtraction from this one and this one, uh, it becomes zero, and uh, it corresponds to this one and this one. So it is pretty much entangled. And uh, uh, three years ago, uh, the uh, correlation was uh, around up, up to here, around up to here, that's why uh, entanglement was only uh, 10,000 web packets, but now we modify the experimental methodology and got uh, one million. But uh, this is not a limit. 
uh, just a, a limit of our memory. So now uh, we can uh, make uh, unlimited uh, scale of uh, continuous variable cluster state. That means uh, we can make these operations forever. And uh, this methodology can be extend, extended to uh, multiple dimensions. Uh, this, in this case, uh, we use four squeeze vacua and uh, uh, five beam splitters and two delays. Uh, we can create this type of uh, lattice uh, cluster state. By using uh, this cluster state, uh, we can make a parallel operation. And of course, if we use many of them, uh, we have uh, some experience of uh, eight squeeze vacua, uh, but <clears throat> anyway, uh, we can make it bigger. Or uh, if we use <clears throat> a frequency domain, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, use on, only one OPO or something like that. So that is a frequency domain multiplication. And of course, again, uh, each web packet corresponds to quantum error correction code, uh, not uh, uh, just a physical qubit, but this is logical qubit. And uh, to realize this type of uh, quantum information processing, uh, real-time measurement of quadrature amplitude is very important. And uh, we did that experiment. Uh, this is a methodology. Uh, we created this type of uh, rising exponential uh, wave packet. Uh, that is because uh, if uh, we can create this type of uh, wave packet, and uh, here is low pass filter, and uh, uh, impulse response of this low pass filter is of course, uh, exponentially uh, decay. Uh, that is time reversal of this exponentially rising. That means uh, we can make a, a continuous time domain, uh, ti uh, time uh, temporal mode matching. Uh, to create this type of web packet, uh, first we made uh, parametric down conversion with type 2 PPKTP. Uh, that means we created a photon pair of horizontal polarization and vertical polarization, and we put uh, PBS here. Uh, just after the uh, parametric down conversion, uh, this photon uh, is ejected from the cavity. But this photon is resonant to this cavity and uh, going to this way and herald the existence of this photon. But of course, uh, this heralding is equal or later of uh, this photon. That's why uh, we can get this exponentially rising uh, wave packet. Uh, let uh, I can show the experimental result. Uh, this is a one scan of our measurement. Uh, it looks like a noise. And at this point, we got a uh, heralding signal. But uh, we cannot uh, get any information. And uh, when we take many traces like this, Uh, we can see some structure here. And uh, uh, if we see the uh, histogram of uh, this structure, uh, we have two peaks. And as you know, uh, electromagnetic field correspond to uh, harmonic oscillators. And uh, 
single photon wave function should be like this. Uh, in this case, horizontal axis correspond to amplitude. And of course, uh, probability distribution of amplitude should be like this, two peaks. And uh, these two peaks correspond to uh, these two peaks. That means uh, we succeeded in uh, measuring real-time measurement of uh, quadrature amplitude of single photons. I mean, uh, this structure. Um, so by using these methodologies, uh, we make quantum information processing. Uh, of course, uh, information is encoded like this as a qubit. And uh, uh, our quantum information processor is universal gate set of continuous variable. Uh, there are two types of uh, uh, operations. One is linear or Gaussian operations. Uh, this is displacement, phase space displacement. And uh, in the language of uh, qubit, uh, power x and power z. And the squeezing or Q and D. And uh, this is C naught. And uh, phase space rotation, uh, which correspond to Hadama. And one nonlinear or non Gaussian operation or non Clifford operation uh, is cubic phase gate, and it is continuous variable version of pi over eight gate. Uh, our big subject is uh, trying to get deterministic C naught gate by using uh, these gates. As you know, uh, there is a, a famous protocol to make uh, CNOT gate by using linear optics. And uh, uh, this is KLM type uh, CNOT gate. Uh, but it is not deterministic, but conditional. That is because uh, this nonlinear sign shift gate uh, is conditional gate. Uh, uh, in the scheme of KLM, uh, it can be realized uh, by using beam splitter network and also photon uh, detector. So that means conditional. But in our case, we are trying to make these nonlinear sign shift gate by using our uh, technology. And also, uh, our another topic is uh, fault-tolerant uh, quantum information processing. Uh, actually, there is big effect. Uh, in some sense, it is a digitizing effect, like a digital TV. Continuous variable operation is kind of analog circuit. On the other hand, uh, qubit operation is kind of digital circuit. That's why high fidelity. Uh, analog TV uh, became very high fi high fidelity uh, by uh, shifting to digital TV. So it, it, that is digitizing effect. Uh, the similar uh, effect happens even in quantum information processing. Uh, this is an example. Uh, if uh, we use just uh, continuous va variable encoding, that means analog encoding for continuous variable processor, uh, even with 20 dB of squeezing, the error rate is 10 to minus 2. But uh, if we make a qubit encoding uh, with GKP scheme, uh, it becomes 10 to minus 6. So it is huge uh, digitizing effect. Um, actually, uh, this uh, GKP means uh, Gottesman, uh, Kitaev is nothing here, uh, but Preskill. 
and uh, <coughs> the encoding is uh, qubit, uh, logical qubit zero is like this, and logical qubit uh, one is like this. And uh, physical state is superposition of uh, shifted, uh, displaced, squeezed vacua. And in any case, uh, we will make uh, this operation. And the methodology uh, can be regarded as uh, quantum noise reduction uh, with non-classical states of light uh, in uh, Heisenberg picture. And in shredding a picture, uh, it is called gate teleportation. Again, gate teleportation was invented by uh, Gottesman, Gottesman and Chuang, and uh, uh, promoted by Preskill. Uh, in this scheme, uh, first we prepare this ancilla state with this unitary operation. And this unitary operation is teleported to this arbitrary input. And we can make uh, unitary operation, arbitrary operations. And uh, it is <coughs> uh, for the tolerant fashion. That is because uh, only one uh, state called magic state uh, makes this protocol universal. And uh, this magic state can be prepared offline. So uh, you can prepare many uh, states or trial, and uh, you can distill the state, and uh, you can uh, get very uh, low noise or almost pure state. And also, uh, this teleportation uh, process itself is a, uh, a Clifford operation or Gaussian operation. Uh, that's why uh, we can use stabilizer cord and uh, we can make efficient quantum error correction. That's why uh, it is for tolerant. And more precisely, uh, for this operation, uh, we make gate teleportation with linear feed forward. And we already did that one. And uh, for this operation, uh, we use uh, gate teleportation with nonlinear feed forward. Today, uh, I will talk about cubic phase gate, uh, that means nonlinear feed forward. Uh, cubic phase gate itself is again uh, Gottesman, Kitaev, and Preskill. And uh, it is pretty much gate teleportation. Uh, this, uh, this is called cubic phase state. Uh, it is ancilla state. And this operation is teleported to this input. And the output becomes like this. And this, uh, for this scheme, we need nonlinear feed forward like this. And this cubic phase state is uh, continuous variable version of magic state. Uh, this is Heisenberg picture of uh, cubic phase gate. And we tried to implement this gate, and uh, we wrote a paper, but even for us, uh, it was too complicated. But uh, recent, recently, we uh, uh, found a very neat way, elegant way, to realize cubic phase gate. Uh, that is like this. So uh, in the sense of optics, it is very simple. Only two beam splitters. 
and the two ancillary state. But here, very nasty. Uh, we make homodyne measurement and make a calculation like this. And by using the calculated value, we make adaptive homodyne measurement here. And then we uh, make feed forward. So I mean, this measurement result and uh, this calculation. And uh, we make, uh, we get uh, the operation. Input-output relationship is like this. Uh, it's, again, really nasty, but if we have enough amount of squeezing, uh, we can cancel out the, uh, these terms. And uh, if we have uh, enough amount of uh, non-classical correlation of cubic phase state, we cancel out this term. So here is uh, 3D of squeezing and cubic phase state. And uh, again, this is uh, quantum noise reduction with non-classical states of light with these states. But it is more than that. Uh, we can create uh, optical nonlinearity by using classical circuit. Uh, of course, we need these guys uh, that that is because we need non-classicality, and non-classicality uh, comes from non-classical state. So it is a very big message. We can create optical nonlinearity by using electrical circuit. And actually, uh, this part corresponds to nonlinear measurement. So. That means this methodology becomes universal. So we can create this C-not gate. Uh, I don't have any time, so I should skip everything. And uh, let me conclude my talk. So we are trying to uh, build this gate. And we already uh, get uh, measurement result, uh, measurement methodology, and also nonlinear feed forward. Actually, we did that experiment. And we uh, succeeded uh, conditional creation of this uh, cubic phase state. Uh, but nowadays, uh, if we have photon number resolving detector, we can uh, make this cubic phase state uh, uh, deterministically. So our ultimate goal should be a universal quantum computer with a one gigahertz clock frequency. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for the... Uh non-atomic talk, right? So uh, we have time just uh, for a couple of questions. OK, so I have a question then, all right? So, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, Chris was talking about comparing different uh, quantum computing platforms. Sorry? Uh, Chris Monroe, mm -hmm. the previous speaker, uh, was talking about uh, comparing different quantum computing platforms. Yeah. I'm curious, can you run something like uh, that, uh, uh, that code on your, on your computer? Uh, sorry, uh, I couldn't catch the question. Okay, uh, so <laughs> the question is about, is about, okay, I'll try it once again. Oh, right? so, which is better? So uh, the previous speaker mm -hmm. had, uh, had a comparison of the, of the, of, uh, uh, the ion platform mm -hmm. and... Uh, and uh, yeah, and this is optics. 
All right, I mean, and uh, if you were to run a similar protocol or a similar code on uh -huh. your platform, how would it compare? I mean, can you do any, uh, or uh, you are not yet at that level when you can run? Um, so it's really hard to say. So in our case, uh, optical methodology is very fast compared to ions. So th that would be the uh, very different uh, point. And also, uh, our experiment is always room temperature. We don't have to use cryogenic temperature. That is very big difference, I think. OK, thank you. So let's uh, thank the speaker again and all the speakers of this session. So uh, this concludes the first day of uh, the conference. Uh, and there is no event this evening. Uh, so I'll see you people uh, tomorrow at 8.30. Uh, but uh, for the, the speakers of the first session of tomorrow morning, uh, Lukin and Professor Rita and Professor Reichel, uh, either come and check the computers before you leave or otherwise, please come at least 15 or hopefully 30 minutes ahead of time so that we can check your, your computers uh, on our system. Thank you.